All right, the Chicago Bulls have been eliminated from the play-in. They join 12 other teams whose season has ended. Uh, a 14th team will join them soon, whether it be Oklahoma City or Minnesota, and we'll get these playoffs started on Saturday. Um, their off-season outlook is up on ESPN.com. Remember, one document. Um, you could find it on ESPN.com. It's actually under the news section. There's a link there, and you can find it on the team page. And we kind of take a deep dive into the Bulls as far as state of the roster, off-season finances, priorities, extension candidates to watch. I mean, the list goes on. You can find everything you need to know about the Chicago Bulls. And we're going to do a eight to nine minute video on Chicago and what we should expect for the offseason. As you can see, their resources to build a roster like we do with every team is behind me. Um, 40 and 42, uh, their pick goes to Orlando if it finishes outside of the top four. There is a 93% chance that it's going to go to the Orlando Magic. The likelihood, I would say, is unless there's lottery luck, which is the last number there, um, that pick is going to the Magic, and that is from the Nikola Vucevic trade. The likelihood is that you are sending two lottery picks, and this is the second. This is the conditions from that are going to go to the bowl. So that is a resource that we don't have, that they don't have, except unless you get a little bit of lottery luck. Um, so I open up the article on Chicago, and I say, you know, basically, you know, you lose in the plane, you lost in the first round last year. Um, I said. It's not all doom and gloom, and I think Bulls fans probably want to throw um, oranges at my at me or my, at my house or eggs at my house. I think the way I would look at it, and certainly there's multiple ways, um, is either you basically can kind of run this group back, um, re-sign Patrick Beverly, and rely on that the 14 and nine record since the All Star break and the number one defensive efficiency rating um, was a fluke. Or if you are comfortable with that as far as that's your body of work. And with this group, a full 82 games that you can compete for a top six spot. Okay, so that's kind of how you look at it from the Bulls perspective, right? You bring back Beverly. You bring back uh, Vooch. Um, Kobe White's a free agent. Io Tsunmi is a free agent. Um, Javante Green's a free agent. Derek Jones is a free agent. Uh, you know... Andre Drummond's got a player option. Derek Jones got a player option. They got a lot of free agents here. So you have to look at under under this microscope. Do we sign Beverly to be part of our uh, mid-level exception? The mid-level is going to be north of 12. So do we sign him to a contract worth eight or nine? Um, we bring back Vooch, who's a free agent. And we're going to go into, with, into him in a little bit. Um, are we comfortable that this team can compete with a full year with DeRozan and Levine, that group? With Caruso, Patrick Williams, can we compete for a um, top six spot? Or do we just take a more drastic um, approach? Is Do we just pivot, right? We always talk about pivot away from what they built um, back in 2021 with the Vooch trade, with the Rosen, re-signing Levine, you know, basically going, hey, you signed Lonzo in a sign and trade. You were the number one team in the Eastern Conference and all hell broke loose last January. Lonzo gets hurt and we know what the rest is history. Or, as I said, do we pivot? So what does pivot mean? Does pivot mean looking for um, takers for DeRozan? Expiring contract, remember. Does pivot mean looking to find someone to take the $178 million of Zach Levine? Does pivot... Basically kind of drawing a line in the sand as far as Vooch, as far as what his free agent number is going to be. Remember, you owe Orlando a first and you owe a 2025 first. That's from the DeRozan trade. So it's not like you have a, you're sitting on a, a kitty of assets. You have your 2024 first and a 2025 first is going to Chicago. I'll pull up their draft assets right now just so you have an idea. Of what it is okay it's top eight protected in 26 27 and 28 so um i'm sorry 2025 top 10 protected that was if i'm reading the top eight protected if they if they retain it here so you owe a 2025 top 10 protected 2026 top 10 2027 top eight 
2028 top eight. So you are restricted with your draft assets. You have a first from Portland that's lottery protected. Who knows if that will ever get conveyed, but you do have a first from Portland that you can trade. You can trade that at the night of the draft. Um, you can't, um, you know, so you can move that if you wanted to, um, but you are restricted as far as what you have to move as far as assets. You can't move a 2024 first because you owe um, San Antonio a 2025 first. I'm just looking at my dog right now. It's ready to go to sleep for the night. Um, so that is the challenge there with your assets. Um, they have one second round pick in 2029. So it's, it's, it's a challenge. It is a major challenge as far as from a draft assets standpoint. So you can retool and rebuild, but you better make sure if you're going to do it, you're going to tear it down and you're going to parlay DeRozan into multiple uh, ones, Levine, not easy pivoting after you basically kind of gave up so much here. Um, so that's a little bit of the state of the roster. I mean, they're all fit season finances. You've got $118 million in contracts. Vooch, is, um, he's got a $33 million free agent hold that puts you over the salary cap. Even if, even if he walks, you're still an over the cap team because when you look at your mid-level exceptions, which is going to be a little bit north of 12, your biannual exception, like you could become a cap space team, but the most you're going to have is 15 million. And why wouldn't you just have your mid-level and your biannual? So if he walks and you don't resign him, you don't automatically get a $25 million slot. So you're still a cap space team. Everybody wants to know about Lonzo Ball, right? What is the process with Lonzo Ball? Can you file for cap release? Yes. If the league determines that his injury is career ending, you can file for relief. You've already hit the one year um, anniversary. He's got $43 million. The league would have to determine if it's career ending and his number would come out. But what does that do for you this offseason? Unless, of course, Vooch is goes, you take that number off, and then maybe you go from 118 in contracts to down to $100 million. And maybe you have $34 million. But if you're a teardown team, what is $34 million? I think you give it one more chance with Lonzo. If it doesn't work and he doesn't come back, next offseason is the year that you file for relief for Lonzo Ball as far as, um, you know, to remove his salary. Um, so that's the direction with cap space here. But, I mean, you look at 118, um, you add, let's say, Vooch is, um, let's put 20 for him. You're at 138. Uh, luxury tax is 164. Let's say uh, eight for Beverly is 146. What do you give, what happens with Kobe White, right? Like it, it starts to add up here. So you've got a lot of decisions. So remember, you're not a cap space team. If Vooch leaves in free agency, um, because of your mid-level and your biannual basically e e equals that $16 million in room. The pr top front, front office priority is, is Vooch, right? I mean, that's the reality is, well, I have, there's two. The first is you've got to figure out and sit down with your coaching staff as far as the inability to close games, right? 15 and 23 in clutch times games. We could probably add 15 and 24 with this Miami game. 25 and 16 last season and 7 and 14 in games decided by five points or fewer. When I was in New Jersey, this is way back when in 2000, I think Don Casey was the head coach. We were basically locked in a room because we blew so many games that the whole staff had to watch basically every game and come up with a report, the inability to close games and what went wrong. That's priority one here. Vooch is second as far as his priority. Durability is not an issue. 70 games plus the last three seasons, all 82 this year. He's going to be 33 in October. Highest effective field goal percentage this year. Average at least 10 rebounds for fifth straight year. What is your number that you are comfortable with? $18 million to $20 million. Four for 70, let's say. It's more than, it's more than what Nurkic is, right? What, what, what was it? Four for 70? It's going to be more for, than the Yosef Nurkic contract. Um, so that's your big priority there is figuring out what to do. The extension candidate to watch is going to be DeMar DeRozan. He's eligible for a four-year, $179 million extension. I am not giving him that. I think he is basically determines if you are going to pivot or bring back this Ross, this group here because he's on an expiring contract. Um, 
20 points per game in each of the past 10 seasons, eligible, as I said, for that big extension. That's going to be the guy to keep an eye on as far as DeRozan. Remember, they, they're going to change the trade rules. So if a player is, is traded, DeRozan would be extension eligible for another three seasons with his new team and 120% increase. So there's the restrictions are off as far as him going to get, if he gets traded to a different team. So that will tell you if Chicago is going to pivot if DeRozan becomes on the market here. Um, he's in the last year of his contract. And then Patrick Williams is the other guy to keep an eye on. He's in that rookie contract. Another guy who played 82 games, averaged career highs of 10 points, 46.5%. Um, missed 65 games last year with a wrist injury. Remember, five-year contract. So you've got to... The Chicago is better. They're starting five with Caruso. Better plus minus than with Patrick Williams, who's kind of more suited, I guess, coming off that bench. Team needs, got to figure out point guard, unless it's Beverly and you bring back Kobe White and Ayo, who's a restricted free agent. Um, they've got the right, right to match on, on Ayo and, and Kobe. Um, you can use some of your mid-level on Beverly if that's what you want to do. Three-point shooting, ranked last in three-point attempts. Um, the only team to average below 30 per game. So it ain't pretty, kids. Like, it ain't pretty at all. The worst place to be is the treadmill of mediocrity. Chicago is on that right now. They're similar to that Orlando team that Aaron Gordon, Vooch, that crew was on, Evan Fournier. You've either got to roll it back and hopefully that a full season with Beverly and this roster can get you into the top six, but then do you have, then are you going to have to extend DeRozan? Um, or are you going to basically retool and rebuild this group here? Not easy answers for the Bulls front office. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.